right, morning, morning, morning. All right, morning, morning, morning. morning. All right. I have, I have five minutes on this card here, so. All right, so my name is Shadron Collins. Um, I'm from Youth Business, Trinidad and Tobago, with schools we have represented here. So when I point, that shout the name of your school, right? Okay, let me, let, me, let me give you a count of three, two, one. All right, Asha girls. I heard, I heard there are schools there. <laughs> I heard Asha girls. All right, so in front here. Three, two, one. Oh, okay. And in the back? Let me give you a count of again. Three, two, one. Oh, it came from far. All right, so I came from point, so well, it was right there. <laughs> All right, so... I'm here to do two things, tell you a little bit about YBTT as well as tell you a little bit about Global Entrepreneurship Week. So who knows about YBTT? Anybody? How is this, how is this silence, yes, Andrew? Right. The best kept secret. So our focus is really supporting persons and entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs between the ages of 18 and 35 um, getting into business or expanding their business. Um, I know Michael have been one of the persons we have supported recently. Um, well, Michael probably in but five different support organizations now. <laughs> right, I mean, that's the true mark of the entrepreneurs that we deal with in Trinidad and Tobago. All of them are um, the same entrepreneurs being supported by the different organizations because one organization really can't support um, an entire entrepreneur. So I think you would have got support from ADB as well, um, Business Booster. Uh, right, so this, this is really what we try to do at YBTT, build entrepreneurs and build that ecosystem where we connect with different organizations. So this is really a joint event held between Youth Business Trail and Tobago and the Agriculture Development Bank. Now, Global Entrepreneurship Week. Global Entrepreneurship Week is celebrated officially next week, the 14th to the 20th of November. And really it focuses on helping and, well, celebrating entrepreneurship and celebrating entrepreneurs. And it's really, um, well, it's a month pack of events. We have 20 events this, this GW session. And this is really the third event that we're having right now. Yeah, third. All right? So with that being said, our focus for GW this year is really on diversification. And we focus on diversification of the economy, as well as where we see development for entrepreneurship is going. So we actually have agriculture, we are focusing on agriculture today. Next week, I think we're focusing on the creative industries and the week following that, we're focusing on the tourism industry. And we also have our youth symposium, our technology symposium was on Tuesday. So when you hear agriculture, anybody here ever, well, family owns agriculture business or is a farmer themselves? Anyone? All right. So. World Food Day was back in 16th of October this year. The theme was, climate, climate has changed, food and agriculture must change. And we can see the, we're feeling the effect of the, the sun right now. Right? We have higher climates and higher temperatures. And it's really about changing our agriculture sector. And this is really what focus really has to be for going forward. How could we develop and change our agriculture sector into really uh, an economic stronghold for Trinidad and Tobago? Um, when we look at the public sector, really, 4% um, of the budget, it, it needs to be increased in terms of where the focus really has to go towards our agriculture sector. So I'll keep it short. I only had five minutes. So I'll pass you back on to Sandrine, right, and she will give you a permission from there. So if you're a young person, almost 18, and you're looking at getting support from your business, you and Tobago, come, come out and check us out. We're located in Shugonas, and you can check us out on Facebook as well. Thank you, Shadron. Our next speaker is Mr. Frank Ali. He's going to motivate you a bit in terms of the potential that exists within the agricultural sector. Mr. Ali is the president of the Bonaire Farmers Association, and he's the, also the ASCT director, Agri Youth Development. His, the theme of his presentation is Agri Dollars and Cents, Dollars and S-E-N-S-E, Cents, like common sense, you can bridge the gaps. 
Let me just tell you a bit about Mr. Ali in terms of who he is. Mr. Frank Ali is the president of the Bonnet Farmers Association and holds the position of director of the Agricultural Society of Trinidad and Tobago with responsibility for vegetable production and developing youth in Trinidad and Tobago. He's a proud third generation farmer operating his full time crop production and marketing project. He is a long standing ADB Alliance partner and a valued customer. Mr. Ali is a passionate advocate for the agribusiness community and youth. Possessed of a collaborative spirit, he is a great mobilizer of resources, actively assisting primary schools and fellow farmers with the important work of contributing to Trinidad and Tobago's food production and, by extension, the national goal of food security which is very important in Trinidad and Tobago. He is well-traveled and has gained a wealth of insights into the potential agricultural entrepreneurship holds for the next generation to come, which is you. And let me just remind you all, the teachers will have shared with you, that we have a presentation from each of you looking at how is Trinidad and Tobago going to feed itself in 2025? By which time all of you will be around 2021. So one, I'll talk to teachers again, but that is a presentation. We have some outstanding prizes. So that is a segment that you all should be looking forward to. So help me in welcoming Mr. Frank Ali to the podium. Good morning, one all. Right. Um, with an introduction like that, I, I think um, that, that is an introduction I want to keep and take with me wherever I go to make any presentations. <clears throat> right, nice. Um, let me give you a little more about what I do at the ASTT. Um, one of the things I do is work with at-risk youths. Um, not too long ago, CNC3 did a special with some young men from Windy Hill who had, some of them had been incarcerated some of them unemployed, and um, they come from what is called a, a hotspot area. And what I would have done is get the assistance from one, two organizations to help the young men up there. And one of the reasons I am here is because ADB was one of the organizations that were willing to help these young men. I would like to give you a little more insight as to agriculture and Trinidad. Um, I am a farmer, as they said, a full-time farmer. We are faced with many challenges. Um, agriculture in Trinidad is not a bed of roses, um, but in any field that you go, is, you, you are met with challenges. Um, one of the things about the ASTT and the organization I represent, we go around and we help young people and farmers. We have people that specialize in all different areas, whether it be poultry, bees, um, vegetable production. Um, something big now in, in the, is export. And we are currently now focusing on three products, basically, for export. Um, anybody in this room could guess what is one of the things we're focusing on for export? I heard somebody say it correct. Hot peppers. We have one of the best flavored hot peppers in the world. The hot peppers that actually go to Miami is one of the best it is preferred. The problem is the cost competing with the Dominican Republic. We are also focusing on crop, other crops like pepper and pumpkin. Another thing that we focus on, because I go to farmers groups, as a matter of fact, I came back 11 o'clock last night from a farmers meeting. We try to help educate the farmers as well as the young people. One of the things we try to do is we look at import substitution. We do not like the idea of 500 farmers all growing lettuce together at the same time. If you look at the shelves when you go into the grocery, you'll realize there are all different colors of lettuce in all different kind of packages. So we try to educate the farmers. We try to show them that, well, myself, for example, I grow what you will refer to as artisan lettuce, which are different varieties, different colors. And they grow very well in, our, in, in Trinidad, open field. And we are currently doing them, and very soon they will be in some of the, the, the supermarkets here. So what we try to do is train the farmers, teach the farmers, right? And one of the things, one of the main reasons I came today, because I had a, a very late night last night, is because of the opportunity to talk to young people. 
and I told they were all agribusiness students or agri students, right? Most? On that side. And these students here? Agri. Form fours? Fours, all right. Five. I see some men, they what? That is six, right? Nice. Any of you uncle, aunt, cousin in agriculture? How many of you went been out to a farmer's field? Two. How much I have on this side? Oh, we have a couple in the back. Right. How was the experience? Did you like what you saw? I'm not hearing you. This is a very quiet bunch of students, boy. What I would like to ask you all is why did you all, I, I want to get to, to figure out the people that I'm speaking to. What is one of the reasons, if anybody, one, I want one person from each school to, to answer this for me. What was the reason for you all choosing agriculture? I want one person from each school to just tell me why you choose agriculture. Because here's the, here the reason I ask that. The average age of the farmer in Trinidad is over 60. Over 60. We need to find more young people and encourage them to get into agriculture. And in a while, I'm going to tell you why you should get into agriculture. So I would like to start with which school, who, which school willing to start to tell me, like, I won't want you to tell me, like, why you wanted to do agribusiness. Anybody willing to start? Because my time will run short. Nice. I have a volunteer. Wonderful. Thank you for being brave and speaking your mind. I would like to have somebody else. I want each school represented. Come on from this. I want somebody from right here. Just why you would have done it. You just have to say, like, why you would have signed up to do agricultural science. Why you're doing it. Especially, well, one of these young men who in sixth form have to definitely, I'm not asking the form fours and the fives. So let me hear from one of you. Anything, feel free to listen. Just say why you would have gotten involved in agriculture. Or chose that field. Um, basically, because of the, well, the country right now is declining in the aspects of the, um, well, money and stuff like that. And I see agriculture as a way in bringing back our funds and increasing our treasury in the way of um, <coughs> exporting. And I guess the same way we create new breeds or different types of um, fruits and stuff like that. That could cause more of a income for the country. And, and you said export. The gentleman here will tell you more about the cocoa that we have in Trinidad. Could I hear somebody from the back now? Anyone? Um, good morning. Well, I choose agriculture because in our area, you barely see um, farmers or people selling like fruits and things. So while doing, coming to this course or going right. to school, um, in the process, well, the teachers or anyone will help us to, you know, further the study and doing it so it will have more farmers and things, like young farmers growing up to be able to set an example for the younger ones that are coming up. Very well. Yeah. Um, what I am, the reason I have asked, I want to know why, because a lot of people will get involved in agriculture because they sign up for the subject because people with a passion, farmers are people who are very passionate and we love what we do. One of the reasons I am here again is because of the opportunity to engage young people in talking about agriculture and talking about agriculture in Trinidad. We need to feed ourselves. The majority of food that you see on your grocery, in the shelves and the grocery is imported. 
and we have farmers here that could produce. Farmers are faced with basic challenges. Some farmers still can't get water. We still suffer from problems as, as poor roads. But we have, seen the, we have seen some form of encouragement because agencies like the ADB now, I myself, well, if you visit my farm, the irrigation system, the machinery that is there, was for loans taken out by the, from the ADB. Uh, if you go to a couple farms in Bonaire, you will see people that have gone, I, I told the gentleman, the CEO, that farmers who had to take a wheelbarrow and push it for like about 15, 20, half a mile to go to a restaurant to pump water because of the intervention of the ADB. These men no longer have to go through that. I'm not talking about farmers that are the age of 50, 57. They don't have to do that because of the intervention of the ADB and the support of the ADB. That is why I am here supporting them and working with the young people. Um, a little history about what I am trying to do. A couple of years ago, if you had gone to any KFC outlet in Trinidad and purchased a burger from them, you, and it had lettuce in it, it came from Borne. Anywhere in Trinidad, it came from Borne. I am GAP certified. Anybody can tell me what GAP is? Nice. GAP certification is something done by Namdevco. One of the things that we do with farmers, chemicals come in, you, I don't know if you all will know the classes, so I'll help you out. They come in four classes. What I do is focus on safe agriculture, growing things safe to eat, safe food. It's nice to say, but it's expensive to do. Because what will happen to a farmer when we go to the shelves to purchase chemicals, fertilizers, you will realize the class one and class two is relatively cheap. The class four and the class, the class fours and the class threes are the biological, the, they are more costly. I, I actually, they came to my farm, CNC3, um, on Money Talks, and they, they, they asked me a question. What did you think about the budget? I am I, I'm not affiliated, affiliated to any political party. And I said what I said as a farmer's representative and as a farmer. I heard our Minister of Finance said that the cost of production went down in 2016. And due to the cost of production going down, the public could look to a lower cost when they go to the market. So I wonder, when the public get vexed with me now, Frank, why are you still selling lettuce for 5 and $6? I thought, the, the, we hear the cost of production? No. Cost of production actually continues to rise every day. When you go to the garden shop, sometimes they tell you when the next shipment comes, the price gone up. So we are faced with rising cost of production. You all know a little idea about business, right? If it costs you $3 to make something, sell it for 5 you make $2. And if you continue selling it for $5 and the cost goes up now to three fifty, dollars what's going to happen? How much are you making? Nice. You're going to 150, and it continued to happen like that. One of the things we need to focus on is, you all know that when you go to places like, I have engaged, our organization has engaged places like, um, uh, let me not call the name. Uh, I don't want to call the name. When you all purchase from this, uh, uh, sandwich a sandwich outlet, a famous sandwich outlet, that when you all go to purchase, do you all know where the cucumbers and the, the sweet peppers and the cabbage and the lettuce come from? The avocado. Avocado, thank you. And the avocado? Not from here. We have been knocking on the door, asking them to supply them. They, came, they come up with multiple excuses. They actually sent us back to the drawing board telling us that we need to do different varieties. When we have lettuce down here that can be used, we import approximately, they import approximately three to four containers, I believe, at, um, a per month, and that is one organization. Millions of dollars. If you go to any of the three major importers, and you stand in their yard and you take a look, you'll see millions and millions of dollars given on the back of trucks. And if you take a drive down to the Mokoya market, you'll see farmers scraping and fighting to make a dollar. Because the powers that be do not focus on the farmers. As long as we have oil, the focus will always be on the energy sector. 
and not on the agriculture sector. We have suffered, farmers have suffered because of the wealth of oil. They talk agriculture, oil price drop, farmers get excited because now they go look at us. Now they're going to look at us, we're ready. We're waiting for years. We're still waiting. They're talking about agriculture. We have, a, I don't want to, let me not go down that road. People that saying they're doing things, people that meeting with you, they listen to you. And up to today, you're still waiting. Governments come, governments go, we're in the same position today. But you know what? Ask this gentleman next to me if he would leave agriculture. I, I, I doubt he will ever leave. I will never leave. Because I see the potential in agriculture and I enjoy growing safe and healthy food. I won an award, in, entrepreneurial award, in, in I think it's 2009 or something like that. And because, not because of the size of my farm, or, but you know what it is? Because of my focus was on the consumer. Making sure that the consumer got a safe, quality product. So what I want to try to let you all know that agriculture is big business in Trinidad. We have seen recently, or oh, my organization has been engaged by a couple of these import companies looking now to buy local. Talking by local. Now what I want to ask, when you say buy local, do you all, when you all go, when you have to choose between, I plant lettuce, so I use lettuce as an example. When you see the local head of lettuce here, and the romaine lettuce there in a nice bag for thirty dollars. A lot of them will stand up and look. They will pick up the romaine lettuce in the bag for the thirty dollars and leave the Trinidad lettuce for five dollars. We have farmers in Trinidad that can grow safe, quality food. But you know what? You, the consumer, have to appreciate your local farmers. You all have to encourage the local farmers. You all have to purchase the products grown by the local farmers. So when you all go home. I tell even the UE students, you come to the farm, you see the farm, and then you go on your order subway. You ever ask them where these things come from? When we do that, we encourage, you know who you're supporting? Now you're hungry, you're eating. But you know who you're supporting? You're supporting, you support foreign farmers and the importers. Somebody say, Frank, why you keep saying that? Importation is big business, you're mashing the wrong toes. Importation is billion dollar business, boy. You think they're going to take farmers and farmers organizations seriously? You are going to cut into somebody's bread. But you know what? We're not afraid of that. Because we represent farmers, and I believe we have farmers, young and old. Some of you here might be farmers as well in the future, hopefully. Some of you hopefully will be farmers. And I want to let you know, it starts off by you simply doing something. When you buy, when your mommy go with you, your daddy go with you in any grocery, look at the local item. Even the local manufactured item, buy that. I went to a symposium in the Cayman Islands, and I watched all these countries very well represented. If you see the PS from, the, from Guyana, fighting for Guyana, fighting for Guyana, anything that's sharing on the table, why Guyana didn't get this, why that one didn't get that? Five, five different countries call, I didn't hear Trinidad. In the crowd, I'm looking for my PS. Where you? No, you. No representation. Carry come. The ASTP was there, myself. And we are a, a, a statutory body. We are the officials. We, I didn't, they weren't vocal. Antigua, if you see how these people fighting for their country, we, why we didn't get this project? Why that banana project not by us? Coconut. Who heard the budget? Some about rehabilitating cocoa. Coconut, 900 acres. We have a project that, got that CTA funded, I believe it's 35,000 US dollars per country. Trinidad is one of those countries. They call four out of the five or three out of the five that have seedlings already established and growing. Trinidad was not called. I don't know if that was an oversight, but Trinidad was not called. That is why I say in Trinidad, the powers that be do not take agriculture seriously. So that is why I am here, because somebody in this crowd might be a future minister of food production. Somebody in this crowd might be a permanent secretary in the Ministry of Food Production. Or maybe the next prime minister. Who knows? You know what I want you to know and what you want you to take from this? 
is that your farmers are here. We want you to listen to us. Do not just stay in your office. Do like what the ADB is doing now. The ADB is out in the field now. No longer the days that you get, when you ask this, a manager, you have to go through all this red tape to go upstairs and no. ADB is one of the organizations that has broken that red tape. They out in the field. I'm talking about the managers out in the field. Hopefully one day out. Soon the CEO going to be out in the field with me too. Mr. CEO. I look at it. Right. So you see, we, we, they out in the field and they supporting us. They understand the importance of the farmers. So what I want you all to understand is that even though you might not be farmers and you're doing your agriculture degree, most likely you might come to my farm when you're doing your, your studies, your papers in UE. Those of you who are supposed to be heading to UE very soon. I want you to know that when you do get into the ministry or even into the sector, always know how to relate to your farmers, how to earn the trust. When, you, when a farmer trusts you, it's not like when you say a farmer trusts you, he will listen to you. He will work with you. If you tell a farmer you're coming by him 6 o'clock in the morning, don't come half past 6. Reach by him for 6 o'clock. Because you see that bond between you and that farmer is something sacred. So even though you all might not be farmers, but you all will end up in what we call the sector, either as a service provider, an input supplier, or some other way. So all I want to say now, I don't know how my time is running. I think I am. I, I can wrap up. Nice. I write. All, all I want to say is this. Continue to do your studies. Work very hard. Please, you all are doing agricultural science. I take agriculture very seriously. I would like you all to take your studies very seriously. I look forward to you all going on to UE and maybe uh, into the Ministry of Food Production or into the sector. Um, with that, I would like to say good afternoon and pass on to the uh, Thank you very much. So I would have liked to give Mr. Ali more time because all what he said, I said on a radio program recently. Once the oil prices, once the oil price keeps fluctuating, agriculture will always be at the bottom. But you know what? Once we have the Frank Ali's of this world that could go through the different committees in this country to talk about agriculture, how important it is as a sector that we need to pay more attention to. I think we will do better than we did. So let's give Mr. Ali another round of applause. And here we have another um, entrepreneur who is in the trenches who will come and tell a story. Um, Mr. Ali told a story. We're going to hear from Mr. Michael Paris. And Just a little situation, just Mr. Ramnath was here very early. He started late, so I said, you know, he's the CEO of ADB. And let me ask him to speak earlier, you know, because I know he has a busy schedule. And guess what, Mr. Ramnath, who is the chief executive officer of the ADB, has decided to stay, and that is commitment. Let's give Mr. Ramnath a round of applause. So Mr. Michael Paris is the energy behind the natural food business, Sula. He is a well-traveled agri-food innovator and a firm believer in green approaches to green business to reduce a company's carbon footprint. Not afraid to experiment, he relishes finding solutions to production challenges by recycling and repurposing materials and has successfully used innovative business collaborations to grow his four-year-old company. A believer in thinking outside of the box, Mr. Paris has benefited from the Solar's IS2 Innovation Grant for Research and Development and his award-winning range of products can justly be described as ethical, Czech, organic, Czech, sustainable, Czech, and profitable, big Czech, money Czech, C-H-E-Q-U-E. So let me welcome Mr. Paris, help me welcome Mr. Paris to the podium.
everybody. Um, good morning, and it's good to be here. I think I'm going to switch some things around and try uh, try a different approach. So I just want to get something from the back. Talking about <coughs> agriculture and. Mr. Ali spoke about the age, the average age of our farmers now, and um, you know, that's over 50, over 60 years. So we have a lot of old people in agriculture, and a lot of young people stayed away from agriculture. Anybody can give me a reason why young people stayed away from agriculture? Too much work. Hard work, the impression is for low class people. Any other ideas, suggestions? Why the young people moving away from agriculture? Everybody wants to be doctors and lawyers. <coughs> Why? Maybe what? Pay for the income. <coughs> I'll take one more after you. Take this, say this is about instead of getting five to six dollars a pound. Now that is retail, so the farmer is not really getting that. The farmer is more likely getting two to three dollars a pound for, for a pound of banana. So a farmer could take a pound of bananas, put it in the sun where people don't want to be, and change it into a product like this. Which is called sun dried bananas. That is what it is. And this sun dried bananas can sell for guess how much a pound? How much? 20 something? Higher. How much? 40 dollars a pound? Higher. 60 dollars a pound? Higher. 70 dollars a pound for sun dried bananas. See where we're going now? People talking about agriculture, hard work, you don't want to be the sun, you don't have the money in it. We need to rethink what we think about agriculture. Agriculture is not only about putting a seed in the ground, it's about what you do to the ground before you put that seed in. It's about what you do while the seed is growing up. It's about what you do when the 
seed bears fruit, and about what you do with the fruit afterwards. Anybody ever had bananas in their house? And it just, people just forget about it, they get overripe, you know, brown spots. Yeah, what leaves it on there, right? You know that? Those are the same bananas that I would sun dry, bananas that people shun it and sell for $70 a pound. By adding what to it? Nothing, just sunlight. I like the sun. The sun has been around from beginning and you know a lot of ancient peoples used to worship the sun they thought you know the sun was you know all sorts of energy and you know sun god and things all respect to that but in addition to that the sun has also been used to preserve food by a lot of ancient peoples when they didn't have refrigerators um, chemicals preservatives they used the sun they used to dry things like meat fruits uh, vegetables, so that in times of uh, when it was out of season, it could remain. A hand of bananas could last you about a week, a ripe one in your house or so. Pushing it uh, two weeks. Guess how long some sun dried bananas could last you? Huh? Yes. I have some sun dried bananas that are four years old and they still taste good. Think about that. So, a, a bunch of bananas I was selling for three dollars a pound that would overripe and open it a week. We now change it into seventy dollars a pound that has a shelf life of years. For four days and this is <laughs> This is what we need to, to be doing. We need to be rethinking. Well, how we see agriculture. We need to be thinking outside of the box. We need to be going in places people don't want to go. We need to be trying things that people don't want to try. You know what your people said? What? Banana dry in the sun? Nah. Me, that would never work. Now we have people from up the islands, people from different parts of the US, from different parts of the UK asking for sun dried bananas. The same bananas that we would put aside is the same bananas they're asking for. This is just to give you an idea. Let me go to the cocoa now. Trinidad has one of the most vibrant cocoa industries in the world. Now it's all, almost in shambles. We have a, a resurgence now of people doing a lot of things with the cocoa that we should have been doing years ago. Things like making chocolate, things like making cocoa drinks, but even things, uh, products that we're not accustomed to, products like cocoa nibs. You've, I've seen your face looking kind of confused. What are cocoa nibs? Right, I, had, I was thinking the same thing. So, in a store, while I was putting my sun dried bananas on the shelf, top in the shelf, I saw something next to it called cocoa nibs. And I'm like, what is cocoa nibs? So I looked at the back of the pack, and the pack said ingredients, organic raw cocoa, full stop. And I thought, okay. So I did some research online. Cocoa nibs are the cocoa bean that, have been, that has been dried. You take all the shell from around it, and then you break it up into pieces. That's it. It's one of the most healthiest foods on earth. More healthy than goji berries, acai berries, all of these exotic superfoods that we imported into Trinidad. Cocoa is way above all of them. We have a tradition of just sucking the cocoa seed and spreading it out or making a cocoa tea with the, you know, grating the stick. But before that and beyond that, the cocoa seed is highly, highly nutritious. When you roast it and when you do other things with it, you lose some of the nutritional aspects, but still it has a lot of good in it. So coming back to the coconut I saw on the shelf now, a pack like this was, so yes, yeah, so I was looking, okay, ingredients, cocoa. Where it was grown, 
Peru, where it was parked. Now, Peru is on the other side of South America, the Pacific side. Where it was parked, the US. So imagine this thing come from Peru, travel to the US, and then come into Trinidad. I thought, I couldn't find a word for that. I thought that was obscene, almost like an insult. Because for growing up, you know, my grandmother said we're gonna Pogo Estate. And you know, everybody knows somebody who work in a Pogo Estate, people have a Pogo Estate nearby. And we just never did anything with it beyond making the cocoa to, to drink and exporting the beans. It got so bad that cocoa estates now, are, a lot of cocoa estates are abandoned. We can't find labor to work in cocoa estates. We can't find people who are interested. Um, we, don't, we can't find people to do it. But yet, in other countries, people are doing it. People are even, a lot of foreigners even coming to Trinidad, buying up the cocoa that that us local would work, the people who still are around who work in the cocoa estates, buying it up, taking it outside of Trinidad, making chocolate with it, and then selling us back the chocolate. You imagine in France and in Belgium where they don't grow cocoa trees, they don't grow sugar cane, the two ingredients you need for chocolate. And they have a, they grow the naked chocolate, where we have sugar cane and cocoa beans, Boys, that is insulted. That is the thing that drove me to say, you know what? I'm gonna try to make this thing called Coco Dibs, and I'm gonna see if it, if it could work. Yeah, I had some feelings like, if it, if it didn't work out, you know, what they will laugh at me, or I could fail, lose my money. Um, but hey, and I did fail. I mean, the first batch that I tried wasn't good. Um, but I, you know, tried to get some, tried to ask questions, um, tried to meet some cocoa farmers, people doing the business long time, um, do some research on the internet, and I tried, because I was already grinding bananas, so I tried grinding cocoa the same way, and took a, not no fancy machinery, you know, I got some cocoa beans, put it in the dryers that I had, which I built from, uh, recycled sliding doors, by the way. So we are talking about no fancy machinery yet. Those same doors you have there, I built a little dryer, put the bananas and the beans inside, dry them. Took a billina, mashed up the beans, threw it in front of a fan, the shell blow away, cocoa dips we made. Took it to the store now. I asked the store to taste the cocoa dips, tell me what she think. When she tasted it, she was blown away. She said the taste compared to the foreign ones is just off the charts. Further research showed that they use low-grade cocoa beans to make cocoa dips and high-grade cocoa beans to make chocolate. Trinidad has high-grade cocoa beans from the start. So you're getting high-grade cocoa dips here. So from this, which sells for, when you crack the fruit open, those cocoa beans sell for, <coughs> per kilogram, about 15 to $20 went. All right, so that's per pound, say, say $10 a pound. Guess how much the cocoa dips sell for a poor pound? Oh, just something? Higher. <laughs> right. Yes, this is what I want you to do. To think, wow. Yes, I want to blow your mind here. Per pound, $150. When we talk about agriculture and business, you know, we really, we, because some people already have ideas formed in their head that, you know, this is what I know, this is what I'm good at, and I want to continue doing this. But we, who do have those, you know, boxes around our heads, or who have a different perspective on looking at something, because, you know, somebody might keep looking at something here, but if you look at it from here, you can see a different perspective. So, coming back now to the sun, everything that solar makes, is dried in the sun. Our tagline is keep the sun, feed your soul. We specialize in using sunlight and sun energy to process agricultural products into things that are highly nutritious, things that are exciting, things that are good for your body, and things that are healthy for your entire well-being. 
we believe in using produce that is grown with natural fertilizers, using natural pest control methods, and processing that does not hurt the environment or does not hurt the people who we get our products or produce from. So for example, all of our farmers, they are on the same level with me. Nobody's below. Our customers, so you know, when we talk about farming being, people see it as a low class thing, we are on the same level. I treat them with the same respect that I would expect them to treat somebody else or myself. We are trying to rethink this whole agricultural thing and to encourage people to rethink as well too. Um, and it's not about farmers, you know, dressing in um, a jacket or a tie, which is good as well too. But it's about, because just last night I was wearing a jacket and a tie. Um, but it's about farmers earning the respect, earning higher income. For years, farmers have been the ones on the low end, getting the smallest amount. We ought to change that. We, I say we, eh? not solely the company, but we, us who in this room here. We could change that. We could change farming to an agriculture into an activity and an industry where people give you the same respect, you get the same amount of income or even more. A lot of farmers are millionaires in Trinidad. Eh? Who could get the same amount of coverage worldwide? You know, through uh, making some red bananas and coconuts. I mean, I didn't really expect to, to go anywhere. We won a an award in Barbados in 2013, a Caribbean Wide Innovation Award. And then later on, we won an award in Guatemala. I didn't expect to go to Guatemala. I went to Guatemala to, to participate and to receive the award. And since then, you know, it's just kept, sometimes stagnant, but also growing as well, too. Because we are still making mistakes. We are still trying to rethink things. We are still trying to you know, make new products still doing experiments, still love. We just don't want to stop. And I don't want you to stop either. There are spaces where you can get help. You have an idea, you don't know what to do. Same with me. I tried the bananas, I didn't know how to take it from something in my hand to something in a pack with a label on it. I asked her on Facebook, hey, anybody know how to put something in a bag where to get the packaging? Groups like YBTT, which is Youth Business Trinidad and Tobago, and groups like the ADB, groups like um, the SR Business Incubators, targeting young people, groups like those exist to help to help um, help people like us. There is help. I want to say it again because even now, you know, I'm still you know seeking out help from people who know people who've been in the industry longer than me people who have, um, you know, farming experience that I don't have. I'm, you know, I'm just in it about two, three years. But we have farmers who are in, you know, just like 40 years, 50 years, who could tell you things like, that's what we don't have. To. So I don't have to make the same mistakes they did. We spent a, I want to switch over to uh, technology. Even though I'm using something like, which is ancient technology, sun drying. Agriculture now is not how it was, you know, five years ago, ten years ago, twenty years ago. It is completely different. Now you could be in a different country with your smartphone, with an app operated irrigation system. You could get a notification on your phone saying, uh, yeah, yeah, saying that, you know, Trinidad is going to experience, uh, I don't know, sunny weather for the next four days, no rainfall. Like, okay, so you in, I don't know, somewhere in California, in the US, you get this message on your app saying you weather conditions, boom, boom, it's okay. I plan to see water in. It even have systems now where you can see exactly what nutrients your plants need from your food, irrigation systems like that. So it's not about, you know, extreme physical labor, like what you mentioned before. It could be smart. It could be savvy, it could be sexy, it could be, you know, technologically advanced. It is, not could be, it is. And we are the ones who need to tap into that. Some of my, like my parents, uh, like my father, he, they use his cell phone, he had to be like this, you know. 
Um, he is um, now trying to show to use YouTube and just look at videos and see different ways of doing things. We, we have a cell phone here. We have our cell phones with us. You know, we're looking at our cell phones so hundreds of times a day. Our cell phones could be, we spend hours on it. We could be using this time to change the way we do things. I, I, want, I want to challenge you all here. You know, it's not about, I want to challenge you the way you think, the way we look forward. The, and I want you to challenge others too about how they look at agriculture. You know, it's not about looking down at it, you're looking up at it. You know, we want to give it respect. We want to make it attractive, because it is. People are doing it outside of Trinidad. Even in Guyana, they're using these technologies. It's up to us to use it as well, too. Yeah, so, um, anything else I want to say? Um, I want to thank the groups like YBTT, because a lot of, com a lot of organizations out there see that um, you know that they give help or they give advice or they give financing. Financing could be critic is critical. YBTT is a group like that who not only gives you access to financing, but looks at your idea, tell tell you how you can improve it, put you in touch with people who have a similar business who can give you advice free of charge, and who can guide you along with the ways so that you won't make mistakes or you won't make as many mistakes, but you will make them. And um, groups like ADP as well do offer financing for agricultural pro projects specifically. And depending on the project, you know, you could have um, you know favorable terms and you know get advice as well too. So um, in closing, I didn't even use this slide, but I didn't know if I should. Yeah, right, so how how you find this solar? Just Facebook. You can Facebook search. Solar, eat this on Pediasol. You could also look at our website, which is under construction, <coughs> at um, eSolar.com. And um, Solar, we are on WhatsApp at 4935296. And um, you can just send us an email at eSolarLive.com. And I'll uh, put it up um, afterwards or during the break. And uh, we are here, you know, so we are a group, one of the resources you can reach out to if you have an idea or a question or whatever. So in closing, I want to thank you for being a participating audience. And um, any questions you could ask soon afterwards or at the break. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. We are running a bit late, but you will be able to interact with Michael as well as Mr. Ali. And when Mr. Ramnath is finished with his presentation, any questions you have for him, you can direct them. But we want to do a 10 minute break. It must be 10 minutes. Of the program where we will be doing, we will be hearing from each of the three schools in terms of how is Trinidad living going to be itself in 2025. And as I said, by that time you will be like in your early 20s when we calculated it. You all would have heard Mr. Ali as well as Michael Harris in terms of the state of the center, um, what we need to do to revive it, and the whole issue with food security, we're talking about recession, we need to put more um, focus on agriculture. So we want to hear, we are not going to tell you all what has to be done, we want to hear from you all what has to be done. And we will make the adults listen. We have to make them listen because sometimes they don't listen, and I have a problem with that. So we want to hear from you all to tell the adults. We have the CEO of the Agricultural Development Bank. We all have other senior officials from the ADP. We have Mr. Michael Ali, who himself is a senior um, agricultural entrepreneur. We have Michael Harris. We have Shedron Collins, who is the general manager of YBTT, who is the voice for youth in terms of entrepreneurship. So we have these authority figures in your presence. So we want you to tell them what should happen in terms of a strategy for the country to feed this 1.3 million population that we have. So let me just quickly run through the criteria. 40% goes to creativity, 
and this should, this element should be should be the focus of the presentation as it demonstrates the depth the depth of thinking by the students, which will inform how you arrive at your respective suggestions and or solutions. We have allocated twenty percent the structure of the presentation, and this will focus on on the format of the presentation, how you structure it, and that would also inform how well you understood the question. Twenty percent goes to your focus on the topic. This and this really has will be ensuring that your presentation is geared towards the information requested. What we requested is a strategy from you. How is Trent Tobago going to feed itself in 2025? 10% for the wow factor. And I'm, I was hearing some things that going to come in terms of presentation, so that would be a wow. And 10% of the 100% points would be awarded for uniqueness and the creativity in the presentations, as might have said earlier, thinking outside of the box. And 10% 10, 10 goes for overall presentation um, in terms of the approach and how you responded to what we asked you for. So, let me call Asha College, the representative from Asha College, who is Priya Ramsarup. Priya is presenting on behalf of the school and I understand that there is another piece that is added to Priya's presentation. So let me invite Priya and her team to the stage. Let's give them a round of applause. Ashfield College of Nopit would now like to present a small presentation. Fast forward to 10 years later at the Global Agricultural Awards Ceremony in Geneva, Switzerland, <clears throat> Amanda is presented with an award for the <clears throat> best hybrid corn that grows in six weeks and is pest resistant. Her reward was one million pounds. Freshly picked and enjoyed. 
Point four, aquaphonics. Integrating different aspects of farming to support and promote the different agricultural system. For example, fish farming and vegetable crops. That is used in the waste from fish farming to fertilize our crops. Developing our secondary industries. We need to look at preserving and buckling our crops and vegetables. Not just with, with pepper sauce and tomatoes, but we need to be more creative or innovation or innovative, sorry, and look at how we can extend the shelf life of some of our produce, like managing dashing, pumpkin, etc. Point six. Develop our livestock industries. We should not be importing chicken. To meet our local de demand, every home should have been self sufficient. Point seven. We need to lobby to our government to encourage young farmers. Young people have been led to believe that you only do agriculture when you have no academic sense. We as a nation need to treat the profession of agriculture with the respect it deserves. Doctors eat food, lawyers eat food, also teachers eat food. Government and private institutions need to help encourage young people to practice agriculture as a profession and make money as a business person. We need to develop technology that helps to make agriculture less laborious and in this way, we can do agriculture on a large scale. Feeding our nation is everyone's business. We all need to do our part because food comes first. Thank you. Give the team another round of applause. <laughs> so, at the end of the formal proceedings, we will, the winners will be announced. So, next we have Nalini Sicharan from Cal. Rafi Chaima Secondary to present on behalf of a team. Development Bank, um, Mr. Sheldon Collins, Mr. Ali, Mr. Paris, and Madam Chairperson. Good morning, teachers and students. Um, sustainable development in agriculture plays a major role in improving food security and nutrition. The United Nations formulated 17 sustainable development goals. Um, from the second goal of the the second goal of the United Nations development was called zero hunger, and the aim of this was to was designed to end hunger, achieve food security, and improve nutrition and promote sustainable agriculture. Food security is not only about addressing hunger, but also ensuring proper nutrition. Achieving nutrition security is about receiving the right quantity, quality, and diversity of one's diet. In order to achieve sustainability, several factors must be balanced, and these aspects are the weather and climate, as what Mr. Collins spoke about, as climate change crops will change, um, location, knowledge by farmers, economics and economics and production, distribution of food and fiber, as well as financial viable factors and socially acceptable factors. Having no hunger can be advantageous as it can impact our economy, health, education, and development. An estimated breakdown of hungry people in Latin America and the Caribbean in 2015 was 34.3 million. Therefore, we must all make change to promote the UN Sustainable Development Goal. Number two, that was zero hunger. We can start at home. We don't have to start anywhere big. We can start at home by providing support to local farmers and making sustainable choices at what um, Mr. Paris spoke about where um, when we go to the supermarkets, we don't have to buy the foreign, we can buy local. And most importantly, fighting food waste. Food insecurity, climate change, poverty, hunger, and malnutrition are not challenges only faced by the Caribbean, but as well as other parts of the world. Therefore, it is important that Trinidad and Tobago as a whole work together and ensure that there's enough food for tomorrow. Sustainable agriculture means that an integrated system of plant and animal practices have a site-specific application that will satisfy human fiber needs enhance environmental equality and natural resource to also enhance the quality of life of farmers and society as a whole. 
Maharaj et al. from the Faculty of Food and the Faculty of Food and Agriculture in the University of the West Indies compiled information similarly to the United Nations Sustainable Development Goal number two, but applied it mainly to the Caribbean, and they proposed four applicable solutions. The first one was aquaponics and hydroponics. Aquaponics is a developing organization that concentrates mainly on the production of crops and fish. They suggested that by investing in aquaponics, it can be beneficial to diversifying the new industry and by setting up itself quicker, thus contributing to food production and reducing hunger. The second one was prisoner utilization. They put forward that pr prisoners should act as a production resource and thus increase supplies with price reduction. The third one was home gardening. There are many reduced food prices and if there is an increase in home gardens, there will be a there will be a decrease in the demand for food. So this should encourage us that we should have our own gardens at home. Reducing food waste was the fourth one, and the aim is that supermarkets should donate food that is about to expire to shelters, hungry families, and sell sell less attractive foods at low prices, as the less attractive foods are really purchased. Like what Mr. Paris said, where you choose the banana, you choose a banana that doesn't have a brown spot. We should choose our local. This is our one. We should choose that. Um, other strategies enforcing sustainable agriculture is biofuel. Um, biofuels are designed to replace gasoline, diesel, and coals, which are fossil fuels because they are made from animals and plants that died millions of years ago. Biofuels are mostly made from plants that are that has just been harvested, and there are three main types of biofuels, ethanol, biodiesel, and biojet fuel. Um, biodiesel is considered renewable because they are replenished as quickly as they are used. Yes, biofuel is um, better for the air quality. Um, biofuels can be made from things like corn, sugar cane, sugar beet, grass, wheat, soybeans, and animal fat. Integrated crop management. This is a holistic approach to sustainable development in agriculture. It does not specify in one situation, but focuses across the whole farm, including socioeconomic and environmental factors to, to deliver the most safe and sustainable approach for a long-term benefit. This contains carefully considering site selection, soil management, crop rotation, crop nutrition, pest management, water management, as well as landscape management that fit local condition and climate. The ICM delivers sustainable agricultural production that safeguards the farms, natural assets, and surrounding community currently and in the future. Investments can be diverted to entrepreneurship where crops are used to make new products. Trinidad and Tobago is known for indigenous crops such as cassava, beetroot, dashing, ginger, onion, sweet pepper and yam, just to name a few. Using some root crops like cassava and dashing, um, it can be used to make cereal. Cassava can also be used to retrieve cassava flour, which is quite simple, where the starch from the crop through process is of washing and pulping. The pulp is squeezed to extract a starchy liquid, and once the water evaporates from the liquid, the starch flour will remain, and we can use this to make um, bread and pastries, even cookies. In this, like, um, as Mr. Paris is also saying, in the shelves of the supermarkets, we tend to buy uh, Mr. Ali as well, as we, we tend to buy the lettuce that is foreign. Um, the presentation of our crops and produce is not compared, it cannot be compared to a foreign, but um, we need, we need to take up the decision of choosing our food locally and our produce locally. So in the shelves of the supermarket, like for example, the cereal, we tend to buy like Kellogg's and those other foreign brands when we have local brand like Sunshine Snack. And we don't buy that because foreign brand is everything and we buy that. So we need to pick up our duties ourselves and pick up our duties ourselves and by the local brand and choose wisely. Presenting local products that are more attractive and encourage customers to buy locally. Trinidad and Tobago has one of the best cocoa in 
the world so that the government needs to invest more in the cocoa industry because once our country can produce sufficient cocoa, then we can export to other countries and we can even produce new chocolate related products and sell them locally. Also, citrus fruits can be utilized to produce new flavored juices that are native to our country itself. Farmers need to plant a wider variety of crops and this can reduce the import bill. Also, it must be ensured that the cost of production for certain products are kept at the lowest price possible. Um, Mr. Ali spoke about the sweet pepper and the avocado and stuff like that. Um, we, need, we need to encourage our families and everyone to choose locally. Thank you. exploitation of the aquatic environment and destruction of healthy habitat is crippling the fishing industry. So it's a simple case of supply and demand. Supply is low, price is very so. And then I have my family to feed. industrial land grabbers for the limited land resources. Not to mention those large-scale monocropers who are degrading the soil and still getting land because they have the money to do so? No, no, no. So I decided to plant on the hillside. Now I am being told that my slash and burn farming techniques is destroying habitat and is leading the soil erosion and flooding. Additionally, people stealing all my produce after all I do. So the little I have, I need to make a profit. Sustainable agriculture. 
sustainable agriculture can integ an integrated system which allows us to meet our current needs without compromising the need, the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. It requires an upgrade from traditional environmentally exploiting methods to futuristic techniques that will increase productivity without resource depletion. Sustainable agriculture, it requires a vision that will transform and reform existing agricultural communities so that the econ economic viability is attained. Sustainable agriculture, where, e where equity related to acquisition and distribution of agricultural resources are promoted and maintained. So what is our way forward? Point one, let's rejuvenate Cedros, a former prime agricultural community that is now cemetery for dead coconut estates. Cedras can be brought to life with the implementation of brackish water aquaculture where existing swamp lands are utilized for the cultivation of brackish water species. In addition, existing coconut estates can be rejuvenated with the inclusion of agro-processing units to allow the manufacture of coconut sugar, oil, and coconut honey, just to name a few. This will have a spiraling effect on job creation and the seat of the Cedras area. Secondly, there must be the revision of land allocation process. We must ensure that the limited land resources is fairly distributed, but is also placed in the hand of individuals who are motivated to build and revive the agricultural sector. This calls for a review of existing laws and policies related to land acquisition, distribution, use, and development. The interjection, the interjection of new, appropriate, and accessible technology. Technology has been the driving factor behind the development of agriculture, of the agriculture sector in the past and must be the driving factor in the future. In centers for young persons, the government must initiate research and development in the agricultural sector and must allocate the necessary funding. The government can provide scholarships for young individuals to pursue agricultural related courses and can subsidize loans for agro related businesses. This can help to boost the development of agricultural based industries providing both goods and services, leading to an overall increase in productivity. Revamping of CPEP and URP programs so that they can supply the labor to government controlled farms, which would offer a diverse range of produce grown with greenhouse and grow box systems. Retraining of ex carony workers so they obtain the technological knowledge in sustainable farming practices. Development of our agro-processing industry. Why don't we manufacture our own butter and cheese? What about ideas like smoked tilapia, five finger jams, and pomerac toppings? This would be, this would help to increase our marketability on a global scale and satisfy our local needs. So there are just a few examples of what can be done and how, as a nation, we can improve the state of our agricultural sector so that we become a sustainable, autrophic, first-class agro-economy in 2025. Yes. Wonderful work, wonderful work. At this time, it's my pleasure to introduce the Chief Executive Officer of the Agricultural Development Bank, who I said, you know, was here from, from very early this morning, stayed on, very committed, Mr. Shivan Ramnath, who will address you. Thank you, Madam Chairperson, and a pleasant good morning to all. I think you all deserve to give yourself a second round of applause. This morning, when Madam Chairperson would have asked if I was able to stay on, I was tempted to say, I can't because of my schedule. But let me say that I am indeed proud and happy to say that I did. For it helped me to understand and to remember a key word in the name of the institution of which I am, at this point in time, I'm charged with responsibility to head the Agricultural Development Bank. For this and you guys are what it is all about, development. I would also ask that you give Mr. Paris 
and Mr. Ali a round of applause for the platform that they had set. Before I go to some details, some of which I would be touching on because the speakers before me and even yourself would have touched on, I want to just make sure that you all are clear. How many of you here know what is the function of the Agricultural Development Act? Put up your hands. So I'll just take 30 seconds to tell you. The Agricultural Development Bank is a state agency under the Ministry of Agriculture, Land and Fisheries. The Ministry of Agriculture, Land and Fisheries is charged with the responsibility of developing policies and the direction for the agricultural sector. With the current state of the economy, there's a lot of talk about diversification of the economy and agriculture has been identified as a key area for that. As the financing arm, we are there to help fa farmers in terms of obtaining affordable financing for their projects. So we are here to help, and we are here to develop. Earlier on, you would have hear, heard a statistic that the majority of farmers are over a certain age and more to the older age group. Anyone here could tell me what is the age group in agriculture? Just give me an idea. Make a guess. When you hear youth, what age group you think of? 18? Right. So in agriculture, a youth is defined as the age group between 18 to 30. Years. So it means there's a large scope in between there by which people have the opportunity to grow and develop. Have every, any of you changed your perception of agriculture since you have been here? There was one who said that agriculture was seen as low. Do you still see it that way? So you see some potential. Good. There was one who said that they did not see um, the opportunity for jobs. You still share that view? Good. And there was one who said he just want to stay out of the... You still here? Do you still see it as a challenge to be in the sun? or having to spend a lot of time in the sun. Right, it's a challenge. But as Mr. Paris would have pointed out, there are some benefits to be gained from that. So the hard work does pay off. And the sacrifices at this stage does lead to something beneficial. Now traditionally, when we look at a farmer, what we have perceived in our minds is someone out in the field, working in the hot sun, as you pointed out, with a tall top boots, sweating. Do you all see a farmer as a businessman? Who, how many of you all see a farmer as a businessman? Put up your hands. How many of you don't see a farmer as a businessman? Why is a farmer considered a businessman? Because at the first stage, in terms of his plant churn, he produces. But what is the second thing he does with what he produces? He sells. So we are the ADB, in recent times, have been using the term agri-entrepreneur instead of farmer. Because we want to paint the image of a farmer as a businessman, as someone who looks along the value chain to the added value and benefits that could be derived. One school pointed out that there are agri-students and agri-business students. That's two separate areas. It's one. What do we understand for those in the agri-field or the agri-business field of the value chain? Anybody? Is there anything we could do after a farmer plants his crops? What was the next phase uh, besides selling? Could we use that for something? jams, jellies, juices. So you could be a processor. Good. How do we get that produce from the fields to the market? How do we get whatever we produce into the supermarkets? We need transport. So there are jobs in the transportation or more technically the distribution field? Fine. 
Mr. Paris would have made a great example of touching along the value chain in terms of what can be done. And that is what we speak of when we mention entrepreneur. The potential to start small, but end up great. He has also pointed out that this is something that he has done through an idea. But he has manifested that idea into a bit of innovation. And that innovation, using bananas, that basically we would leave home to rot and spoil, into something that, how much he said he was making for a pound of um, cocoa nibbets? No, the nibbets. $150 a pound. Compared to, if you ripe the, if you have cocoa and you sell it, you go basically give you $20 a kilo. And a pound of bananas in the market is how much? $6. And how much is he selling the dried bananas for? So you think that encouraging any of you all to go into that business area? Does that sound lucrative? Is that something that, look, if I were to go into this and I were to try and practice this, I could achieve my lifelong goals? When we look at food sustainability, the presentations that each of you all would have made, how do we feed Trinidad in, and Tobago in the year 2025? What is required? Ideas, innovation, implementation. In implementation, however, we must recognize that we cannot do everything on our own. This is why under the Ministry of Agriculture, Land and Fisheries, you have organizations like the ADB who will help with the financing. You have Namdevco who will help with your marketing. If you were to go into the field of fish, you have organizations like SIDC who could provide you with technical advice and even some marketing in regards to that. So the potential for agriculture is great. We would have touched upon the value chain and the different job opportunities that you have. But it starts with you. It starts with you as an individual recognizing that there is potential and opportunity. Think of the guy who developed Facebook. He is a multi-million millionaire. Steve Jobs when he developed Apple. Apple is seen as one of the higher end best pieces of technology. They lead the field in some areas. And even Google, the way we communicate, well, at least when I was small compared to how you guys communicate, and some of you almost have better phones than me right now in your pockets. The thing is, it started with innovation. It started with an idea. I mean, it started with someone taking that idea and running with it and being brave enough to pursue it. One thing you must never be afraid of is, is failure. The only thing failure should do is make you stronger. It's easy to say, and the distractors are wrong, you to tell you, well, look, you have failed, or your friends to laugh, or make you feel like you can't do it. The only reason you can't do something is because you choose not to. Always be, if there's a problem, a solution exists. Because I, I, I go by the, the mandate that God didn't put any problem in front of us if he didn't put a solution. But you must be willing to think, and you must be willing to apply the skills and talents and attributes that he gave to you to execute that. That also applies to agriculture. And I even want to take it a bit further to come to some specific levels of um, jobs regards to agriculture. It may be related or not directly related really. about agriculture. Yes, the first thing you think is it's about farming. But yes, there are people who come out with relevant degrees and go into farming and become businessmen. You could have go into the field of teaching. And if I look at the ADB and I look at our other our organizational structure, we have a corporate communications who is here with us today. We have corporate manager of finance, business development credit, and I myself, as you see you, so that there are different fields that you could branch into. Agriculture is a base. It's a, it's a base that is to do endless. In the University of the West Indies, the agricultural program, as it was known 
10 to 15 years back is now changed to agribusiness. There's a reason it is called agribusiness, because what the country needs is the next phase. Not only primary production on the side of the road of trying to hustle in the market, but we're looking for innovation. What do you do? How do we feed ourselves? How do we create what one team put together as sustainable agriculture? And then how do we attract you guys to stay in it? Because like my friend here, you don't want to go out in the hard sun, a vision. And that is a dream. And how could you use that to propel yourself to achieve what you want to achieve? It's about thinking and finding a solution. So agriculture is something that could be very dynamic. It could be very interesting. And it has its, but like nothing else, it comes with hard work and dedication. And the support of the people around and the agencies around is needed. These agencies do exist. Organizations such as your business, TNT. You have your life example of Mr. Paris and Mr. And the good thing about it is these institutions are willing to help and to speak to you all at every opportunity. I encourage you all to tap into this type of knowledge and to this offering. To determine when you walk out of here, yes, I've come from Pfizer bag. I've sat down on the auditorium. The sun is hot outside. One thing back and ask yourself, what could be the benefit of that session today? What do I want to be when it comes time for me to make that choice in terms of choosing a career? How successful in life do I want to be? And how am I going to make that difference to Trinidad and Tobago? The only person who could answer that question is yourself. And the fire, the dream, and the drive has to come from within, with the knowledge that the support is around. So I'm indeed proud to, to stay here this morning. The presentations were excellent. The drive is there. And it is encouraging for me to see that the development of the sector definitely has a chance. In closing, I would just like to say thank you to you all. Have a safe trip back home, and thanks for attending the session this morning. Let's give Mr. Ramnet another round of applause. You know, Mr. Ramnet was saying every word that he's saying, forgetting that the air condition is not working, and I'm sure you all did too. Um, there are some takeaways from Mr. Ramnath's address that you all need to take with you. Um, one thing is the issue of failure. Many of you are afraid to fail. Understand, failure is part of success. What must happen, though, you need to learn the lessons from that situation, not to repeat and move forward. The other thing he spoke about is that, like any other sector, agriculture is hard work. You, mean, you must be committed. I mean, you want the dollars and cents, but you have to work hard. You have to be committed. You have to be passionate, not to be distracted. So, Mr. Ramnat, again, thank you very much for sharing those very useful insights. We change things up a bit now. Um, we have an interactive workshop with Gerard Thomas, our very faithful um, entrepreneurial partner. Gerard is the entrepreneur, and he's an entrepreneur, and uh, Chief Executive Officer of Launch Rocket. And he's going to do a workshop with you, understanding the mix, agriculture, technology, and entrepreneurship. And you all will not be fanning when Jared comes because you'll be very, very engaged, trust me. Help me welcome Jared. Okay, Chief Judge is saying that he wants to announce while Jared is setting up. So, and I'm sure you all want to hear. So let me invite Chetron. Just switching it up a little bit. So we'll have each of the judges. Let's kind of give a little comments. Let me invite Miss Maharaj. As a matter of fact, let me invite all the judges on stage. So, yes. Right, you're already setting up. Okay. So, if 
All right, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Nandini Maharaj. I'm the branch manager acting of the central branch of the EDB. What I would like to say in terms of the, pres the presentations, excellent from all schools. Um, it is very good to see a lot of girls um, in the audience. What I would like to say is that um, I want you all to practice and to actually do these projects because you are the future. As um, our, um, our chairperson said, in 2021, you will be the adults who have to carry on this. So um, that's what I would like to say to you all. Please um, think of agriculture as a business. And I would re really like to see the youths uh, coming from the bank. We, as we said, we have a very aging farming population and I would really like to see the young people involved in agriculture. Well, um, I've been a full-time farmer, I mean, not knowing what to expect, telling me this morning I would have to judge. I was blown away by all the presentations. Obviously, you all put a lot of effort and time into it. You all did some, a lot of research, all of you. It was well done. I am totally, totally pleased of, of what I've heard. Um, a couple of these schools actually, um, all of you as a matter of fact, very much on point with a lot of the, the, what we ask you to do. And um, I even wa was amazed at some of the recommendations. You all come across as, as experienced farmers, people in the sector, people who know what's going on in agriculture. So for me, totally pleased with all the presentations, whether it was the presentations that were involving many or the presentation involving the one young lady I am totally pleased with everything that I saw here today. Wonderful. You also give yourselves a round of applause. Wonderful. Hello again. The, um, <clears throat> the ideas coming out of the group presentations and the, from the school presentations really were on point. It is interesting. You know, these are the ideas you know, that, are, that were discussed and presented by you that are discussed by the farmers, the bank managers, and, or at least, and in the parliament as well too. The discussion that you all read, that you all give really <coughs> could match up in any sphere, from the banks to the schools, to the farms themselves, and even to the parliament as well too. A comment to the, to the ASJA, um, presentation. A wonderful thing about yours was that it really had an all-inclusive approach. The, like an all hands on deck, so not really leaving up the responsibility to any one group, but involving really the society, all members in all aspects, um, to really uh, solve the problem and not just um, have the problem addressed by one person. To the Capuchimer person, um, congrats for coming up by yourself. Uh, job well done. And um, we could see that even though you had a, a prepared speech, you made a great effort to include some of the ideas that were discussed by myself, Mr. Ali, and uh, Shadron. So great on you on you know, really taking all those points and putting it into your presentation. To the Faisabad group, um, good teamwork. You all um, really performed as a unit. Um, really performed as a unit, and um, your presentation was really uh, cohesive and um, well put across. Congrats to everybody. All right. <clears throat> they like to make life difficult for me. Eh? <laughs> All right. So. Uh, going with our presentation. So Azure College, um, what stood out for me is that you kind of took a holistic view, Azure, right? right? A holistic view of really what um, agriculture is about. All hands on deck. What the government needs to get involved in. The farmers need to get involved in. Even the man in the street needs to get involved in. I think that is really what stood out for us there. Kari Pachaima. Well, who went up? Yeah, Kari Pachaima. Down here? 
All right. What's the of, well, I have a love for the 17 UN goals, <laughs> right? So I think it's supposed to be implemented in everything that we do when we're developing budget, policies, anything that we do for Trinidad and Tobago. So it really stood out for me that they use that as well. Um, Faisabad, right? Faisabad, what stood out for me is the, and what I think um, stood out for all the judges as well, would have been the use of Trinidad live examples using CPEP, using Karani and these things. Um, I think that's really what stood up for us. So without further ado, can I get a drum roll? You have laps. If, if once you have laps, you have a drum. Can I get a drum roll? <laughs> <laughs> okay, like, let's do it on three. Can I get a drum roll? One, two, three. And the winner is... <laughs> I have to hold for the little moment. Faisabad. <laughs> All right. All right, so are we doing the presentations now? Or? Who is the manager of new business and product development at the ADB to present the Faisabad team with their prize? Can we have the team on stage, please? Including their teacher. Please, yes, 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 yes. All right, we just wanted to present you all. Now, everybody's going to go away with something, but we are honoring the most outstanding one out of the three. All right, they were all excellent, but this one was the most outstanding. We are giving you all exotic fruit trees to plant in your schools. So you will always see it, remember it. When you go back to your alma mater, you look for it and you spread the word. Because we also have a situation in Trinidad where we're cutting down too many trees. All right, so you can't even find the local exotic fruits. So that's why we decided to give you all exotic fruit trees to plant in your schools and nurture. Okay, so to Faisabad, congratulations. We're giving you a carambola, which is also called a five-finger tree. And if you need assistance in terms of how to nurture it and stuff, we will hook you up with the Ministry of Agriculture representatives for your particular area. All right? All the best. The other two schools, you can collect it afterwards. We're giving you two sugar apple trees. All right? So, you'll treasure those. How is everyone doing? Oh, yeah, yeah. How is everyone doing? Come on, y'all. Who just won? What school won just now? So why are y'all so quiet? How, how are y'all doing? <laughs> Hot. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, cool. So we're going to try to make this cool and fun and exciting for you guys. My name is Jared. I'm from an organization called Launch Rocket. And uh, our organization help entrepreneurs start businesses. So we do a bunch of events, cool events, an event called Startup Weekend where we help Anybody with an idea, any business idea, you come from Friday 
And on Sunday, you kind of develop turn an idea into a business. So basically, you turn an idea into a business from one weekend. And it's fun, it's activity. It's not like a course, but it's all about developing ideas, meeting entrepreneurs, connecting with each other. And uh, my objective today is to talk to you about understanding the mix between agriculture, technology, and entrepreneurship. So we heard some really good um, presentations just now. I think one of the schools spoke about the, the sustainable development goals, and you may uh, see some of the pictures there. This is going to be interactive. We're going to have a lot of questions. I know it's hot. We're going to try to speed it up. And we're going to show you all a demo of some really cool stuff. So it's going to be fun. So who's excited about agriculture here? That's the first thing. Who's excited? Excited, OK? Let me just raise your hands high. Those who are excited. If you're not excited, it's OK. But if you're excited, it's extremely high. High. This, this is not a raise hand. High is like this. All right, so we have a few people, all right? So my objective now is to get everybody else who is not excited, extremely excited about agriculture by the time we leave. I'm telling you, like I wanna use this word, I think agriculture is this amazing, really cool, kind of sexy. So, it's so ripe for innovation. And I, I t I'm telling you, by the time you're done here, you'll see some really cool, amazing things. First question is this. Who would like to partake in any of these as the career in the future. Who would like to have maybe the, the yellow craft in, in the next 20 years? Nobody? I have one, one, two people. All right. <laughs> who, who would think they would like to live on the, the, the picture to the right? Um, they would like to live in there as their penthouse. Everybody raise your hands. If you're raising your hands, hold on. First thing, first rule. We're going to try raising hands. I know it's hot. But if you're raising your hands, you have to raise your hands high. All right? So who wants to live in the penthouse on your right-hand side? All right? So you have a group of people. And who thinks the, the bottom part is, is interesting? Instead of having people on the, the farm, actually, to pick crops. Thank you very much. Whew. Instead of having people on the farm trying to pick crops, um, you will have robots actually do it. Who thinks that's exciting and different? The robots, yeah? You really think so? We ain't seen nothing yet. We're going through some really cool stuff. All right, but so I'll show you a picture or an image we saw, and you may or may not be able to see the text. It's a little hard, but this is what the future of, of farming could be. So let's look at the pictures. Everybody sees the drones? Yeah, so they want to be able to use drones in the future. In the top right corner, they have a um, fleet of agribots. Robots that are on the field that are doing different things. Then we have the smart tractors. So these smart tractors, they have GPS control um, steering. So it's nobody's in the tractor. The tractor's being managed all robotically. Then we have texting cows. Uh, you all do you think that's funny? That's funny, please. Let me know if you think it's funny. Let me know if you think it's real. Who thinks it's not real? So those who don't raise their hand believe Texan cows is real. So you guys believe Texan cows is real? Yeah? You believe it's real? All right. You think it's fake? It calls Texan. I don't know if it's so, but it calls Texan. Right? So you look at that Texan cows. And then we have farming data. Because you need to be able to manage all this data. You need to be able to manage all this information. And this is the future of agriculture. But agriculture is just bigger than on the farm. All right? That's one important thing I want you to remember. Agriculture is definitely bigger than just on the farm. But before we dive into it, you know, what I believe is we have to just understand the basics in terms of words. We talk about agriculture, we talk about entrepreneurship, we talk about technology. But what does it really mean? Right? So, this is the definition of technology, right, from Google, using Google to find the definition of technology, and the application of scientific knowledge for purposes, blah, 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 blah. It's fine. The bottom is just a, a picture of something that's very archaic. It's called a dictionary. Anybody knows what a dictionary is? Yeah, very good. I thought all you knew what Google was. All right. But I think this definition of technology is just a little complex. It can be much simpler. Anybody can give me a definition of technology. It's really simple. What is tech or how would they define technology? And there are prizes to be won, by the way. So how would somebody define technology? Who wants to go? Nobody wants to win a prize? Um, so modern machinery to make every day. Life easier. All right, cool. A, a better and a closer de de definition definitely give this gentleman a nice prize. And give him a, we get him prizes out. Definitely be serious. So here's your, your first prize. 
All right, so, so my definition, give me a round of applause. So my definition of technology is really, it's, it's a tool, and it's very similar to what they said, machinery, it's a tool to you know, be able to read information, analyze information, communicate information, but most importantly, it's a tool to be able to produce results at the speed that you want to be able to do it, all right? Then there's uh, the definition of an entrepreneur, all right? And a person who sets up a business or businesses taking on financial risk in the hope of profit. Who does not want to make money? I hear a voice. Who does not want to make money? Okay, good. All right. So we all have entrepreneurs here, people who have the potential to be entrepreneurs, which is good. And then we have agriculture. All right, so we hear, you all know about agriculture. We don't have to go into the details. Great. We're going to the fun stuff just now. So why I spoke just now about agriculture is just not only on the farm. We saw the tools with the drones. We saw lots of... Um, it, it goes more. So this is a picture I saw of how a company was making chocolate in Australia. And this kind of looks at the whole entire agriculture um, where you have the crop, you have cocoa growing, and then you pick the cocoa, and then you carry it into raw materials, you package it, you ship it, then you send it to location, and they do testing, etc. and it goes until it reaches a bar. And I think this is the process. And the, the interesting thing is, when people think of agriculture, first, most of the times they think of steps one, two, three, and maybe four five and six a little bit, but they don't see that the, there's this full value chain, this full thing that Mr. Ramnath mentioned earlier about being able to look at different parts of the agriculture industry. So in reality, you could be getting into agriculture and just only be helping with the distribution side of being able to sell chocolate. So all the think as we go through this process, because we have a little quiz at the end and we'll have to know how much time we have left. When you're thinking of technology or you're thinking of agriculture, agriculture does not only stop at the farm or what products come out from there, but there are so many things that can be applied within that process or within that value chain. It's being able to apply technology to the agriculture. So the question, the first, next question is, out of these 13 parts, where can you apply technology and entrepreneurship? Who wants to give that a shot? Out of the 13 parts, where can you apply technology and entrepreneurship? Anybody? Anybody on this side? Nobody knows where they can apply technology and entrepreneurship. Where? Sorry, sorry? From stage one. It said from, so it means going to. Excellent. So please give another prize. Seems like this, this school just winning. All this school learning take care of well. <laughs> Right, so so that's the, the good thing. You can apply technology and entrepreneurship almost at any stage. Literally at any stage, you can apply technology and entrepreneurship. And that's important to remember as we go forward. So what I'm going to do now is try to show you a quick video. All right. And the video is here. And just show you a quick video on the future of farming. most basic need. Throughout the ages, men have strived to produce more and better food for growing populations, better tools, improved techniques, and technological advances. However, all this progress has had one common element that has not changed. Man. Man has always been at the center of food production and has now become the limiting factor. For 10,000 years, the primary focus of techno has always been Increasing the productivity and safety of the operator. But these incremental improvements will soon be outpaced by the exponential population increase that we are experiencing. Sometime in the near future, the population will exceed our ability to provide food for all of its inhabitants. What we've done on a scale of transition from hunting and gathering to an agrarian society. A complete reboot that will change our conception of what agriculture is. Inspired by nature, utilizing swarm and gaming theory, they will plant, tend, and harvest, executing each agricultural task and reducing the need for herbicide tillers, planters, and harvesters. This new system will be developed in four phases. Phase one, planter. Phase two, 
Tender. Phase three, Harvester. Phase four, integration of the planting, tending, and harvesting into one autonomous inter that can operate all season long, performing any task as necessary. Prospero is a working prototype of phase one, a swarm of autonomous micro planters. Operating as one organism to plant a field, they determine where and how to plant each seed productivity of each acre, farming inch by inch. First, they check the ground below to see if the seed has already been planted and whether proper seed spacing has been achieved. If not, they will plant a seed at the optimal depth. Then they mark the seed's location and apply any necessary fertilizers, herbicides, or insects. communicates wirelessly with the rest of the swarm to optimize the swarm's planting efficiency, letting nearby robots know if it needs help planting in that area. Prospero does all this now. Y'all thought I was cool? Oh, y'all sound so tired, but I know it's the heat, but come on, did you find I was cool, yes? No? Yeah? You want one of those in a yard? I said no. <laughs> All right, so, so, so there's a lot of cool technology out there. There's a lot of cool technology out there, and we're going to run through so many technologies, because sometimes we think about it that we think of the farm, and we don't realize, hey, there's a lot of things out there, and people are using technology to become the entrepreneurs that they want to be and to help the farming industry. So, one sec, all right. So the next slide, we go on. So this is a company called um, Silent Herdsman, and they have colors, colors for cows. Anybody could tell me what the colors could be doing? Could get a prize. Texting? Who said texting? <laughs> Well, it's nothing but close enough. Who's that texting? Who's that texting? Yeah, one price. So it's very close to being texting. What these callers are doing, you know, be, at, and you, before we looked at what the future of farming could be, right? And we saw texting cows. So what this does is um, the, co the callers help in the heat of the cows. Because the heat of the cows relate to fertility and to whether or not they have a disease. And what they've realized is that being able to measure the heat of the cows constantly, you're able to know when a, a, a cow is, is fertile and be able to ensure that you have production of milk continuously compared to just checking and waiting and not knowing when the cow is fertile. So this is one cool example of using technology and we have actually seen now, the technology, when they put this on, it has to send messages wirelessly. So it's almost like texting cows, close enough. All right, then we have, um, we have drone deployment. So that was one of the examples we saw before. So why, why would you want a drone to be deployed over your farm? And I hear, you gotta talk loud. Then it just gets quiet. <laughs> Sorry? Water, so what, what, what would the drone do? Water the plants, okay, that's an option. Yeah, that's an, that's an option. All right, great. Because the water part is a little hard because the drone's a little smaller. All right? But you'll still get a price, sorry. <laughs> right? But yes, definitely. To be able to give you an aerial view. Because if you have a large farm, I'm mean, If you have a large farm, you don't want to be walking through your farm and having people walking through your farm all the time. All right? You want to be able to see this from an aerial view and be able to make decisions and know, okay, crops are growing here. You might have some pesticides problem here. You want to be able to look at that aerial view and make those decisions faster compared to just being on the ground. Then we have um, farm logs. This is another company. And these are companies, by the way, that are existing today, right, and making millions of dollars. And then we have farm logs. And why would you need to capture data? Why, why, why would you want to capture data and record all this data about your farm? I have a side. <laughs> Who said about it, turn? All right, we have one person. You're getting licks, you know. Please, seriously. All right, we have, who said monitor? All right, another price for you. All right, so, and that's the reason. You want to be able to monitor this data, capture all this data, and be able to say, okay, hey, you know what? I'm seeing the plants in this section. They're growing better. Have this, this data so you know we could see patterns and see trends that you may not have identified before. 
Isn't it strange that, and, and I don't know when this diagram was, I was trying to find the date of when this diagram was, was created, and I, I saw an article referencing it from 2015. I'm assuming it was 2013 article, drew this infograph, this design. Um, but it, it's just so cool that they're talking about the future of farming, and three things that they said about the future is already here today. So we have the drones, we have the texting cows, and we have the farming data. So it shows that there's so much potential there in terms of mixing technology with, with agriculture. So show you some more agriculture tools, some more companies that are doing some really cool stuff. So there's freight farms. Anybody could tell me what they think this is? A container, yeah, I know it's a container, but what, what does the container do? Transport? Planting crops, all right. Planting crops, it is. You want to say planting crops? <laughs> you're going to talk louder until you're getting a lot of licks. <laughs> all right, so it's definitely about planting crops. So, but why? Why would you want to plant crops in a container? You all have a chance now. Somebody answer quick. <laughs> For what? And I hear you. All right, so, uh, so uh, close enough, so you can definitely get a prize. You're getting a prize to do it. <laughs> Right, but it's 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 not it's not it's part of preventing diseases and insects, but it's really about preventing it from nature. <laughs> it's about preventing it from the environment, preventing the natural. Um, you know, you look at the environment. There are days, there are seasons, but imagine if you could plant crops 365 days a year, grow crops without worrying about seasonality. And the crops now being able to grow in this controlled environment, control the weather and the conditions of how this crop grows. And these are companies that are making millions of dollars. And what's amazing with this freight farm company, they only have two major products really now growing in this container, which is lettuce and different types of herbs. They give you the seeds. Um, they give you, the, of course, the, the, the con container. And they have a mobile app now to monitor what's going on inside the the um the container and trying to address and see okay crops are growing etc. You know we talk about a lot of these technologies, but have you guys ever seen any of these in real life? Nothing. Have you seen any type of technology that allows you to monitor the soil, data to your phone, and anything like that? Anybody? Anybody? No. Well, guess what? Today's your lucky day because we're going to show you. I have my friend here, Anil, who's on who's on on the stage with me. Anil, say hi. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> and Anil has with him here a device, a plant. And I want to show them. Yeah. So, uh, Jared talked a lot about all of these companies are doing things like monitoring and, you know, collecting data. And um, this is actually a unit. And I actually put this together and wrote the software for it, which basically share and temperature and humidity data and logs it onto the, um, the unit itself. Uh, it has a battery pack uh, LCD to show you the information and a solar panel so that it could um, work outside without having to work on external power. And you could actually go online and be able to see the information that it collects so on a tablet, mobile phone, anything, um, you could get the information there. The other part of it, too, is that it has the ability to relay information and control things like pumps. So, for example, I could set it so that if the moisture level reaches a certain level, it can automatically pump water to the plants. And this is stuff that I have. No, and it's it's relatively easy to do. All of it is off the shelf stuff. You could go on Amazon and buy this, buy the, the equipment and the programming. I, all the in software is for, is free online. So I, and the software for this are actually published online for free. So anybody could go and get it. Um, the plant has. I can get the plant by the way, but the plant has a Twitter account. <laughs> yeah, the plant has its own Twitter account. So. Uh, if there's a, actually a, a Twitter account that will show you the information for the plant, the moisture level and, and the temperature and that type of thing. And every once in a while, I think every hour, it tweets. So, I, and I don't actually have to do anything. It's automated. 
So, so, so think about this for a second. We showed a bunch of companies that are doing some really cool stuff in technology. And they showed them, you know, being able to control um, the, the, their plants and growing of, of their, their forestry, whatever, the, the agriculture monitor it. And now we, we have a live demo right here. And the good thing about it is that Anil did not, he didn't build this in the States, he built this right here ordering a few parts, connecting it together, and it shows the potential you have in being able to build things locally. Even though we see some really cool products out there, but you can build some of these cool products here locally and things with it. So if any of you guys are really serious about agriculture and you want to be able to apply technology, you have a gentleman here by the name of Anil who will be able to give you guidance and assistance in being able to tell you how to do that. So I know time is running out of us, so we're going to run up, wrap up a little quickly. Uh, another tech company that's going on is a company called um, Full Harvest. Uh, so apples, like which one is better? Which one has a spot? The left one? Yeah. So which one you would take? The right one, right? All right. So and I think I think Michael, I think I didn't hear the first part, but I think somebody spoke about that earlier in terms of being able to take fruits and vegetables that have that look that better than the others and not utilizing it. So Full Harvest now allows companies that waste food for products that they don't want, but it's still good to be able to use it in different places. So at the end of the day, you don't have wastage of good food. All right. Um, another product that we have, I want to show you all a video. Again, it's going to be called FarmBot. And this one is, is, is really amazing. So try to do this one quickly. understand what happened there just now? Basically, you, you buy the equipment or get the equipment and you control your entire farm all from your computer or from your phone. You could grow multiple crops. They do everything. They water it for you. They kill the weeds. They take care of it. They feed it. They do everything for you. Come back in about three weeks, a month, maybe two months, and then you have your fruits or your vegetables growing and you could mix and do different plants. This is the, the new technology as it trains was more. Great. Yeah, so this is the this is the, the, the new technology in terms of being able to plant. No longer somebody had a problem today earlier with being in the sun. What was the problem? What the problem in the sun? No, you don't have to be in the sun. You're doing everything from your mobile device and being able to grow up. Do you guys think this is cool? Yeah? So, you know, one of the things and and this is my little two cents in terms of being able to pitch to the ADB. And, and asking and saying, one of the great things is all the code. Now you could buy it. You could buy it for, I think it's about $3,000. And of course, if you're shipping it here, it's going to cost a lot more. Right? But the cool thing about it is this entire, the technology to do this called open source. Does not know anybody who does, who does not know what open source is? Everybody knows open source? So open source is when they make all the code and the technology available. So basically, anybody could see it and build it, and it's not hidden, it's open to the public. All right, so all this technology is available, and it'll be really cool to be able to get, you know, the students to be able to use and see how technology can be applied to farming and get companies involved. And the last thing, which is really interesting, is a product called Leaf. All right, so Leaf now allows you to create your own, this is a, a Leaf box here, it's like a mini and it allows you to grow products 
inside your house. So you put it in, you get, they give you all the things you need, the seeds, the chemicals, they give you everything, you close it, and then it grows. And then after you open it back up, and you are ready. Now you can monitor it from your phone to make sure it's still growing healthy and everything, all the levels are right. Every advanced with technology that you could able, you're able now to plant anything, and all this is agriculture based. And it's really, really powerful. And now, I want to definitely, we talked about a lot of international companies, but we have a lot of local companies that are doing some amazing called Market Movers. Anybody heard about Market Movers? No? So Market Movers allows you to deliver food to your homes. So you don't have to, it's like buying products online. So you go online, you purchase whatever vegetables or fruits you want, and they ship it to you. All right? And you know you're getting quality vegetables and fruits because they have their, their, their partner farmers. And that today, Market Movers has been around for the last six years about six years, and they are doing that locally. And these are some people who are doing some really cool things. Nourish, Nourish TT is another company. They are looking at preventing wastage of food. So all the food has been wasted at the supermarkets. That is still good, but the, the markets, and they believe that but the banana might look good, and, but it's still edible and it's still being able to use. They take those foods and be able to apply it and, and give it to the poor. So I wanted to go into some more um, so a little workshop with you, but I know time, we just got the, the, the indicator that time is running out. So, but I just want to say that there are a lot of opportunities in agriculture. Look at the technologies, look at the problems that you're seeing and try to be able to, to identify them.